This video is about the values tab. So let's click on it. And we notice that we have uh, three tabs, uh, channel, data, and the PNTR or pointer. The values tab allows you to track the analog data being plotted by both time and amplitude. It's also a useful way to obtain the coordinates of the plot and object areas. And finally, it's a way to set up up to 10 analog values and names for use by other parts of the program. So we'll explore each of these capabilities in this tutorial, and we'll uh, look at each one starting with the uh, Channels tab. So once again, beginning at the top, the Channels tab allows you to select the analog channel you want to monitor. Again, the displayable analog channels are labeled 0 through 9, and you can select them here with the uh, drop-down menu, 0 through 9. So we're going to stick with channel 0. So let's deselect the other channels that uh, are being plotted. Uh, so let's click on the Configuration tab. That's the one here with the pencil. Oh, we're there at the Colors and Scale tab already, so what we want to do is just click on Channel 3, uncheck it, uncheck 2, and uncheck 1, and that will allow only uh, Channel 0 to be plotted. All right, let's drop the Configuration tab, get back to the Values tab, and let's proceed from here. Okay, now we have only Channel 0 being plotted. So let's look at the first set of data under Last Analog Data. This shows the amplitude of channel 0 and the time that the amplitude happened based on the time scale window below. So our time scale window below happens to be 0 to 120 seconds, and our value is changing right now. It's uh, one in the 150s, 40s, 30s, and so forth. And it'll continue to change as the plot marches across the screen. Now just below the plot pointer, uh, rather just below is the plot pointer that picks up the same amplitude time values based on where the cursor is pointing. Now you can see that as we move over the sine wave, whoop, the sine wave just went away, but here it is at the beginning again. Here as we move along the sine wave, we can uh, pick up the time and the amplitude value of the particular sine wave. So if we want to investigate what a sine wave or any other plot for that matter happens to be at any given point in time, we can just use the plot pointer and put our uh, pointer over the plot area and that'll give us the time that it occurred and the value at that particular time. Now, next come the maximum and minimum amplitude values for the channel uh, zero plot, along with the first time they occurred within the current plot after a new plot has begun. Or, for that matter, after you click on the min and max average button below, which we'll click on now. It may take a couple of clicks to reacquire the minimum and maximum amplitudes. We just got the maximum amplitude there, so let's let it go down to the minimum. All right, it's coming back up again. So now we have the maximum and minimum values. And as you see here, the new maximum value time was 81.85 seconds into the plot, and the minimum value time, in this case, is going to change again, and it's now 92.63 seconds into the plot. Finally, the average amplitude of the plot is displayed for the total time it's been plotted from the last reset, which is usually time zero, to where the plot is at the moment. So if you want to know the long-term average of a particular plot, don't reset the plot uh, and make the time scale long enough so that the plot doesn't automatically reset just like it did now when it gets to the right end of the plot. You can make the plot uh, time any number you want, uh, even the hours, and that should give you a very, very good averaging time. Now let's go on to the Data tab. The Data tab may be used for interactive applications, data display, or for temporary data storage. For the 10 displayable analog channels, you can key in both a name and a value for the quantity. 
For example, you can type in set point reading in channel 4. So right here, instead of uh, data 4, we can type in set point. Well, let's erase that. Type in set point. Hit the enter key, and then let's say our set point is going to be 50. So we'll just type in 50. And uh, now we've actually created a set of data for analog channel 4 that's going to be set point equal 50. And our micro can read that, and also our macros can read that particular number from the program. So this is a good way of setting up a stationary type data for our analog plots. Now let's go to the pointer tab. The pointer tab displays the relative and absolute x and y coordinates of the cursor on the plot area. It also displays the x and y coordinates of the object background, which is where you can place meters and switches and LEDs, which we can't show at this point because our plot area occupies the entire screen. But Notice the difference between the relative and absolute readings. The relative reading for the current XY values, in this case, are, are 0 to 500. Let's see if I can get there. There's 500 on the Y. And the 0 to 120. 0 to 120, there it is on the X. Those are the relative readings. Now what we can do, for example, is come up here to the, um, to the icons on the toolbar and let's reduce the time and the amplitude to half of what they are. Now let's go up to the top here and we see that our X value is now 60 and our Y value is just a little, a little over 250, 249. So that's the relative values that we're talking about. Now the absolute readings deal with the fixed XY plot coordinates and they are 0, 0 at the bottom corner here. All right, I'm getting a little bit negative values. All right, it's a little touchy, but 0, 0 here at the corner and they are 100 and 100 up here at the top right end of the plot area. Finally, the object background XY coordinates are for locating things like switches, meters, and such outside of the plot area. Cannot really change right now because we don't uh, have any uh, object area being displayed. You notice they don't change again because we don't have anything there to uh, allow it to change. But once we get into creating custom interfaces, this feature will certainly come in handy. So anyway, that's what the Values tab is all about. It's a very useful feature, so take some time to explore all the things it can do for you.